Well, hello, Canadian Campaholic here with just a very, very short, short video uh, about our trailer. I got a question from uh, one of our subscribers recently who was asking me to follow up on a problem that we've had with the trailer as it relates to the wall-mounted air conditioner. Um, and he specifically asked, have we solved the issue or figured it out? And the short answer there is no, we have not. The wall-mounted air conditioner is still an issue. So let's go over to the camper and uh, take a look and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So the issue I'm referring to relates to our 2018 Salem Cruise Light 197BH. You can see up there we have a wall-mounted air conditioner. The idea behind this is that as uh, the air conditioner gets condensation, it would flow out of these gaps in the case here, pour down the side of the trailer and go into this guttering, and then go out to the four inch spouts and completely clear the window. A couple of problems here. First of all, you'll notice that, um, whoops, this flashing is not entirely flat up against the air conditioner. So that's your first problem. This area fills up with liquid which probably doesn't help in terms of drainage. Um, but let me go inside and tell you where the problems get even bigger. So here we are now inside the camper and in a nutshell, basically what the problem is, is that even though this air conditioner is mounted with a little bit of a lean to it, and although it's, uh, it's sealed underneath, sits in a pan, which is supposed to drain to the outside, inevitably, if it's very humid out and very hot in the camper, and you run this wall mounted air conditioner down to anything below 70, 71 Fahrenheit, you will start to get condensation dripping quite aggressively inside the trailer. It'll start um, leaking out from underneath and you'll start seeing condensation dripping down here. It'll usually run across the bottom of this little plastic edging and drip down onto the dining room table. Huge design flaw. Uh, not a very good idea, and in retrospect, I would probably never recommend a camper with a wall-mounted air conditioner. Um, the reason we bought it, it did make the camper considerably cheaper versus having a big system on the roof. It made the trailer lower, so if you're getting into tight spots, um, you know, that helped a little bit. Um, but the biggest thing was, was cost and also maintenance. You know, if this thing ever quit, I figured I could buy another... 8,000 BTU unit from say Walmart and uh, as long as it fit in the opening just put it into place. This one's never given us any trouble in terms of how it works except for the leakage. Now I've had this panel apart underneath here. I'm not going to take it apart for the video. There's not much to see. Very little clearance in here. Uh, there's basically almost like a sheet of metal with some uh, some rubber coating on the top that's meant to try and keep the condensation from coming in the camper. So how do we solve this problem? How do we deal with it? Well, there's a couple of tips I can give you. One, keep all your windows closed. Keep the door closed to the camper and try to keep your roof vents either fully closed or only partially open. Basically, the reason is you want as little warm, moist air in the camper as possible when you run the air conditioner. Um, if you have a window open, which wouldn't make any sense anyway, you're almost guaranteed to eventually get the underside of the, uh, the metal case here get so cold versus the ambient warm air in the camper that you're gonna get condensation back here and it's gonna start dripping through. I've never really been able to determine if the water that's coming in is from within the unit and it's not draining from within the unit or if it's just condensation on the underside, I'm not entirely sure. But I do know that um, keeping the window shut and the roof vent shut helps. Second tip is try not to run this thing too cold. I find if I do anything below 70, 71 Fahrenheit, um, it, it, that's when we get more leaks. Start taking it down to 68, 67. Uh, yes, it can cool it down to that in here, but you're more likely to get drips. And 70, 71 is fairly comfortable. The other thing that we've also done to help with this is to try to uh, keep the camper slightly tilted towards the air conditioner, just slightly. We have Camco leveling blocks, and when we get to the campsite in the summer, I take a look at uh, how level the trailer is, and ultimately I aim to have the trailer tilted just ever so slightly towards the air conditioner. That's risky because these uh, absorption fridges run best when they are absolutely level, so that is a, a possible problem. We haven't really had an issue with that. But you also don't want it tilted too much that you've got drawers opening and doors opening and you know you don't want the whole thing tilted like you're on a submarine but i do find that if i can tilt it uh, towards the air conditioner a little bit that that helps with some of the the condensation so long story short uh, no the problem is not solved um 
Part of it, I think, is just the way these air conditioners are designed. I mean, I remember when I was uh, a teenager and uh, we had air conditioners like these in our house, the window shakers, they would actually have holes in the bottom of the case of the air conditioner to make sure that that pool of water that you inevitably get on the back of the air conditioner could drain out. And then I noticed about 20 years ago, they suddenly stopped putting those drain holes in there and the whole back of the air conditioner just basically fills up until it overflows. Um, and this problem is not unique to my camper. I had it in our old uh, townhouse when we had window shaker air conditioners. If they weren't tilted to just the right angle, inevitably you would get water coming inside. And that's exactly the same as what has happened here. And they also haven't done a tremendous job of sealing it. So at some point, the, uh, the water finds its way out. Now, I've kept a close eye on it. Uh, we don't have any structural damage. We don't have any mold or mildew in there. We've kept it under control. But it's always interesting when we leave the campsite, the first time I take a sharp corner, I look out my rear view mirror or my side mirror, I should say, on the driver's side. And inevitably you will see quite a lot of water pouring out of that guttering outside. So uh, definitely doesn't seem to drain very well. So in summary, combination of the drainage outside, the setup inside, it's a major, major issue. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the person uh, that asked this question, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm sorry to hear you're having the same problem. We are too. And uh, if we ever buy another camper, it will have a roof mounted air conditioner. Anyway, hope you're having a great camping season. We'll talk to you later.